Good evening, everyone. Where have I gone? Here I am. <laughs> oh, good evening, everyone. Hey, how you all doing? How you all doing? I see you're all gathering, gathering in the chat room, which is brilliant. Nice to see you all. And I've just realized that <laughs> part of my t-shirt is keyed out, which looks pretty cool. What the hell? Ah, hey, end of the year. End of the year. Not quite the end of season four, though these seasons are completely arbitrary, uh, seeing as that it's not like a there's a room full of executives um, <laughs> deciding on whether I get another season or even how many episodes there are in each season. I have just decided that there's 10 episodes per season. And here we are at season four, episode eight. Holy crap, I've made 38 episodes of this stuff. I'm not even done. There's more. There's more. There certainly is. There's... Uh, well, you'll find out next year. Good night, everyone. <laughs> no. Tonight, tonight what we're doing, we are going to do a, uh, a little bit of mopping up of stuff which I couldn't put in any other episode. It's going to be an even mix of developing stuff and camera stuff with a bit of other stuff thrown in there. It's all going to come together at the end, I hope. So I hope everyone's having a good uh, time winding down for Christmas. I hope if you're still at work, as I'm sure many of you are, I hope you're doing no effort at all and just, you know, running out the clock until we can all go home and uh, put a hot water bottle on. It has been freezing here in London. My goodness. And when I say freezing, I mean below zero. And when in these old, crappy, badly insulated British houses, when it goes below zero, you really do feel with it. Feel it. I think my bed is, is like about 45% hot water bottle at this point. Ah, how are you all doing? How are you people on the uh, in the chat here? Oh, they're all talking about Bell and Howells. Yes, well, <laughs> there might be a bit of Bell and Howell action later on. Spoiler alert, anyway. So, how are we doing? Well, I've already asked you how you're all doing. And you can all respond in the chat. And every now and then I will bring the show to a screeching halt just to read what the uh, what the people in the chat are saying. Yeah, I'm, I'm a little like Elon Musk in that respect. I'm, I'm pathetically... Um, impressed by uh, people responding to my social media. So <laughs> here we go. Ah, firstly, into my little box I go. And here we go. And uh, whoosh, boing, and oh, look at it. Look at that. It's Santa. That's a still, that's a frame from uh, some Super 8 film that I, that I, uh, well, I uh, shot, well, my a, a pupil of mine shot on a coaching session, a teaching session that I did just the other day on 200T. And there you see the people behind Santa all queuing up with their Christmas packages to take them to the post office. And while we're at it, while I'm showing you around, right above me, uh, that's what the, uh, that's what AI um, art, whatever bot, what, what is it called now? Machine learning, uh, AI bot. That's what it said when I said, uh, I just wrote eight millimeter Super 8 16 mm 35 mm movie camera, and it gave me that. It gave me <laughs> gave me a machine which can do it all. Now it only exists in the in the mind of a bot, but maybe eventually someone like Kodak are gonna uh, gonna come round with a uh, an all formats camera. Don't hold your breath, God, considering how long it's taken them to do the the Super 8 camera. Ah, old radios is off today, yay! And what else? Uh, Benjamin Marriott says, same freezing filth down in Surrey. Is that said filth? F same freezing filth down in Surrey, my good man. Minus six tomorrow. Oh, my God. Tonight. Holy moly. Minus six. Uh, British people can barely conceive of that kind of thing. Uh, not, not only us, but people from Jersey. What am I talking about? I went to Jersey, everyone. I did. I went to... Uh, well, might as well, well, I'm still yapping, running my yap. I might as well put myself on the big screen. I went with the Exploding Cinema Group to Jersey a couple of weeks ago. We did a show, not old Jersey, but no, no, not new Jersey, but original Jersey. We did a show there. We did workshops there. It was great fun. I'm going to show you all of the footage and the pictures later because I took some Super 8 as well. So that's what I've been up to, but you won't see any results of it till probably next year. Ah, right. Now I'm going into my little box because it's time to get into what, uh, whether some of that, let's see some of that workshop footage. I know I'm always 
boring everyone with with my uh, workshop footage and be going on about how these amazing uh, the, how the amazing these workshops are. But we got some nice stuff this time, and I'm going to show it to you. Let's start off with some uh, Kodachrome, some old expired Kodachrome. When was that expired? Uh, August '74. Good lord. So this is what my pupils shot. I'll I'll just zip through the um the uh, the 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 awfully uh, un um un un out of focus stuff. Let's have a look. Uh, what have we got? Oh, it's on this one. Well, let's have some music first. Why not? Some nice little ambient music here. Yeah? yeah, that's about the best shot we got of that guy on the phone. Um. <laughs> What else? What's later? Zip forward a bit. Um, yeah, this was the usual. This this looks all kind of like awful kind of nuclear holocaust kind of colours because this is this is really the only usable uh, footage we got was by bumping up the gain like you wouldn't believe. Um, and then some people decide to shoot indoors on a very dull cloudy winter day using Kodachrome 40 developed as negative. Usually this stuff comes out all right. Um, this time, well, I, I had to tell my class um, uh, no refunds. <laughs> what else did we shoot? Um, let's see, we shot a bit of the old UN 54. That's, uh, that's black and white as negative. Came out a lot better. Yeah, not not too bad. This was on Super 8 on a variety of cameras. Yeah, it's it's a pretty useful stuff. This uh, there's the guy on the phone. He was still on the phone when we <laughs> we swapped uh, swapped. Oh, uh, uh, so they were doing some wood carving. Yeah, not bad. Just did it in the usual Rodinol for 10 minutes. Rodinol 1 plus 50 for 10 minutes. And then the next day, what did we shoot? We shot some standard eight. That's right. I did a standard eight workshop for the first time in, in ever. Really, I thought I thought the market for Super Eight is now oversaturated. There's too many people coming to my Super Eight workshops. I'm going to start showing stuff on. I'm going to start teaching people how to shoot standard eight. And a grand total of two people came to that workshop. Oops. I think standard eight needs a bit of. Um, I don't know. It needs a bit. It's a bit, bit more uh, uh, publicity right now. It's still very niche. And here's the standard eight footage. Not bad. I mean, good registration. Good. Uh, not not uh, not wobbly. Some more chickens. <laughs> oh, let's see. Old radio says I shot some expired Polaroid pack film. I'm amazed I got an image. Polaroid pack film, like like stills pictures. Oh, not bad. Oh, that was in slow motion there. Now everyone's talking about what their plans are for 2023. Yes, we've got plans. That's a nice shot. So yeah, that's the uh, that's the standard eight. Standard eight UN54 or well UN54, which I have a lot of in bulk. I'm happy to say, yeah. So I just peel off some more and stick it in a standard eight camera every time I want to film it. I would love to have some standard eight color in bulk. That would be nice. Uh, what else? Oh, then we shot some Super 8. Where is it? Super 8. Uh, no, not Super 8. Some Standard 8. Standard 8 Kodachrome. Where is it? Um, oh dear, where's it gone? Uh, it's not this one, is it? No, that's the UN50. Ah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so this is another one I did. Another uh, workshop. Very nice. Uh, I had this was a private one-on-one -on -one workshop. We went down to uh, Camden Town. It looks like really old footage here, like old from like 1910 or something. It's uh, very nice. And um, we filmed the uh, that's on a Bolia 4008. That was that was filmed. You can tell by the curved bits on the uh, on the sides there. Filmed a, a canal boat going through a lock, Camden Lock in particular specifically uh, very nice looks like you know ancient old footage from a long long time ago ah Manny says the film photography project was selling some color eight millimeter in the states yeah I think that's all you can get that's all it's like you get 50 you get it in rolls of 50 feet and it's uh, I don't know what it was originally whether Kodak or uh, 
Agfa? No, it had to be it had to be it has to be fresh stuff. It's probably from Kodak. I'd like to know who's perfing this stuff. Who is perforating this stuff? Um and then I'll um I'd like to get it on a big roll. Right. Okay, enough of the uh enough of the crappy uh music there. Let's have some new crappy music. And here we have Okay, we've seen enough of this. Let's get that off. And let's have a look at the uh Kodachrome 25 standard 8 that my guys shot. Now this was really old. This was like, they expired in 1974. August 1974. Still got a bit of an image out of it. Yeah, not not, you know, nothing amazing. Also it's 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 all, wow, it's all messed up with the, um, uh, the bits of film imprints on it because I shot it, or we, we've developed it bucket style in an old uh, developing tank. Uh, came out all right uh, the bits of it that you can see <laughs> well of course it, the bits you can see are all right but uh, now I've got something interesting to show you about this I got some amazing contact marks here which um, which are basically when when you develop it spaghetti style in a bucket and sometimes the film presses against other film doesn't let the developer through you get some amazing effects I'll just uh, Past, go through all of this stuff. Uh, we've got any usable footage here? Here we go. Look, look, look on the left-hand side for a second here, and you'll see some contact marks just coming up. Where is it? Just uh, oh, we listen to this uh, nice. Well, there was one. There was one. Just a little for a second there, for a, for a, like a, a well, for a one sixteenth of a second there. Uh, there's more coming up. Where are they? Oh, yeah, like here. See all this kind of stuff? You see, some people say that's that's like bollocked up footage, but really, if you look at the frames of that, in fact, let's have a look at the frames. Okay, it's enough for the Kodachrome 25. It's, I would say that's another, another partial success. <laughs> uh, let's have a look here. Now, watch this. I've, I actually isolated some of the frames of that last one, and I put it in um, in uh, my slideshow. And let's get the uh, background off that. Right? No, not that. Yeah. So here are some some frames of where film has lain on top of other film, and in some, where the, the developer has managed to get through the sprocket hole, but not the rest of it. So check this out. Um, there, look at that one. Look at that. That's a that's a sprocket hole that's let the developer in, and it's made a little picture there through the through the hole. I love these effects. Let's see another one. Wow, that's amazing. That's some Salvador Dali shit. That's some that's that's art right there. That's it looks so kind of three dimensional as well. That looks so great. I might even blow that up as a picture. Uh, that's a nice one. That's the picture I got picture I got behind me here. It's a bit like the uh, the old pillars of creation. That's taken by the Hubble Space Telescope. I'm sure the same laws of physics are uh, are in place. Uh, another one from uh, yeah, sprocket holes lying on top of sprocket holes and letting some through there. Very nice. Another one. I just love these these forms. These these amazing. Yeah, that's another. I like that one. Very sharp. Just funny because this Wolverine scan usually is is total rubbish. Uh, Any more? Yeah, there was there's that. I think we started with that one. Benjamin Harriet says trippy. Definitely trippy. Just, I mean, wow. I might make some sort of mosaic sort of art picture with that. That's the one I love the best. That's amazing. Because that's a bit of developer that seems to have dripped through the hole and formed that kind of soft hole. There's even another hole kind of under it, a very small impression there. And that's Kodachrome 25. That's the best thing about, about film, isn't it? That even when it goes wrong, it's good. There's always something interesting to, uh, to show there. Great stuff. Yeah, nice. Um, and finally, let's go back to the uh, back to the workshop footage. Yeah. And here I've got uh, some 200T. I had a pupil who wanted to do sound. No, not sound. Who wanted to do black and white and color in the same day? So of course I uh, I, I obliged because well they were paying. Um, it's been a bit color corrected uh, too far the other way. It was very blue when, before I corrected it. Um, we went a bit too far into the orange, I think. 
Never mind. That's uh, Kentish Town Road, as taken from the window of the Pret a Manger. Mm. And yeah, um, that big scratch down the uh, the right hand side. That's thanks to Wolverine. I think it's when I rewind the film that that happens. Yeah. Well, thanks again, Wolverine. Also, I put it through before it properly hardened. Now that's the Santa. That's the robot Santa. <laughs> it sings and it dances and it amuses people queuing up for the post office. <laughs> Lovely stuff. Benjamin says inadvertent art. Yeah. Damn right. A lot of a lot of happy accidents here. So that was the that was the color footage. Great stuff. Turned out all right no refunds as i said ah now let's get into some footage from the summer yes the summer i uh, i went on the summer holiday back when when you could afford to do that and i went to uh, italy with various oops not that with various family members and my um umig mini 5 which i've promoted to the uh, to the to the level of family member and what did I shoot? I shot some Kodak Plus X. What the jingo is that? Um, Kodak Plus X is this stuff. It was given to me by my friend Bill Mal Bill Bill Maloney, who sent me a, a, a roll of this. He got like a whole hoard of this stuff. It's basically, it's very fine grained, quite slow black and white film. 7276 as it's called in the uh, in the business and there we go that's the that's the cartridge it was the older kind of plus x they do make uh, newer they did they did make newer stuff in fact let's get a little bit of uh, extra information about uh, kodak plus x what can we find on the internet let's find out um well straight away here we go this is some from the wonderful super8.nl website, which has got this fantastic knowledge base of all different kinds of, uh, of, of movie uh, film stock. Really nice stuff. Um, 64T. Yes, it's black and white. Did I say, did I say it was color? No. Um, that's the more re later stuff. I uh, said it was discontinued in April 2010. And um, there's a review of it here. Uh, what what is what do they say? Is this is this uh, Patrick who says it from does the super eight nl for that? Not sure. Anyway, very clear, sharp. And then he wrote, "This is the one that I shot, black and white reversal film." I personally never liked this film. Oh, whoa, okay. <laughs> so old school plus X uh, gets the thumbs down from um, from the super eight nl website. Never mind. Should we see what that looked like? Oh, how did I develop it? That's the other question. How did, on earth did I develop this stuff? Well, let's uh, let's have a look there. Uh, I wrote down notes, indeed. I wrote notes, or I did. And I've got it uh, right here. There we go. Right. Okay. I wrote, developed it as a reversal. I started off first developer. I used E6 first developer, which is a color developer. Well, no, it's not color developer, but it's the E6 is a color process that I showed you last show or the show before about um, um, doing ectochrome and stuff. And I thought, well, I had this E6 first developer sitting around. I thought, well, why don't I use it as the first developer for some black and white? See what happens. And well, uh, I did a test. I did tests at five minutes, seven minutes, and nine minutes. All of them look rubbish too dark then i did it at 15 minutes and that looked good that that did the trick bleach i used my normal reversal bleach permanganate bleach for four minutes uh, i've even put down the uh the uh the recipe for the permanganate bleach i've gone on about it before and then i did a clearing bath which was not ne technically necessary but i did it anyway of sodium metabisulfite just made it all nice and uh and sort of bright and clean looking after that permanganate and for the second developer, I use some Rodanol, which I usually use for black and white negative. I put that in for nine minutes. I think it was at 24 degrees, whatever. And the normal fix, uh, Ilford Rapid Fixer for five minutes. So how did the Plus X reversal film, the 7276, come out? Let's have a look. Firstly, though, some music. Because uh, this is all silent film. You know, you've got to put music on. Here we go. Here's the plus X reversal. Yay. Oh, I thought, <laughs> I thought I put the music on, but here we go. 
some nice Italian music here for uh, for these uh, for my lovely summer shot, and hopefully this will um, will get uh, um, everyone a bit warmed up because uh, it's bloody Baltic out there. It's not Italian music, I know. It's mariachi music, but hey, it was free. Anyway, look at the grain. Lovely. Um, Neb Lilsrum says, Aha, I have 16 rolls of that from Pro 8. Is that the... Uh, is that Tri-X or Plus X? I, I've, I've taken my hand off my... I've taken my eye off the chat. But hey, here we go anyway. Lovely. It looks really good. This Plus X. For, for being really old... Ah, now this is something that's that was taken by some. Uh, uh, no. Okay, ignore what, ignore that. <laughs> I'll get into that later. The uh, that plus X. So yes, there we go. So uh, plus X uh, gives the th gets the thumbs up from me. Very nice. Ah, right. And is that the last of the developing? Yes, that's the last of developing. We're going on to other things now. Where am I? Let's get a, let's get the top camera on. Um, oh, that's the front camera. Bear with me. Ah, what's going on in the chat, by the way? Oh, let's see how much that Plus X uh, looks, uh, how much that stuff costs if you were to buy some on the eBay. On, uh, uh, well, from the UK, I'm just checking here, but let's have a look. So, um, here we go. Someone's selling two for $30, which considering, you know, one roll of Tri-X, fresh stuff, it's going to cost you more than that, probably at fifty dollars or so, forty-five to fifty dollars in America, and you got uh, two here for thirty. Oh, is that just one? Oh, is that just for? Oh, uh, so yes, it seems he's yes, but he's got he's got twenty-one boxes of the stuff, slightly stained. Okay, so that's just one for thirty dollars. I think that's a bit overpriced, to be honest. I'm probably sure. I'm sure you can get it for less than that. Let's see this stuff. Oh, here's sixteen millimeter plus X. $40 for 100 fit. I think people are having a laugh. I don't know if that's worth it. I don't know. Anyway, there's the data sheet about all of this. I'm not going to go into all of it. So plus X. Yeah, gets the thumbs up. If I see it again, if I see it around here again, I tell you, I'm going to snap it up. I'll get some. But I've got, I've got too much stuff that's, that's, that's black and white or can be shot in black and white. I'm really after some, some color. Benjamin Merritt says, footage came out great. Lovely grain. Indeed it did. Yes, I'm very, I'm very happy about that. It's um, I've had so much grainy black and white. It's nice to have some proper, some proper uh, um, fine grain stuff. And it's maintained its grain. It's like 30, 40 years old, that stuff. So great going. Right, now, enough stock. How about some kit? We're going to finally get some kit on the show. So let's do that. Let's get the, uh, let's get, well, I need to go in my box. Let's get the top camera on. Here we go. Oh, my notes. Oh, dear. Take that away. All my secrets on there. I'm not going to bother with the with the chroma uh, chroma key. I'm just going to have a, a, a plain white, off white desktop here. Um, Old Rehit says, "Yeah, you can get fresh stuff from Film FPP for that price." Yeah, I know. There's too many jokers on eBay. I think that they think they've got gold. Probably I'm uh, partly to blame for that. Telling people to go and get good bargains on eBay, and now the people on eBay have realised, hey, if they'll pay. A little, maybe they'll pay a lot. Anyway, gloves on. So here's what I did. Uh, some time ago, back when, you know, before the cost of living crisis kicked in, and I couldn't do this anymore, um, I went and bought a whole tray of camera crap from an auction. Not eBay, uh, an actual hammer auction. I bid online. I think I spent £50 or so, not including the, the, the petrol it took to go and pick the stuff up. Because uh, these guys, if you get them to send it to you, they, they charge you absolutely ridiculous money. F off price. Um, anyway. Uh, um, right. So what did I get? I got this. I got a whole tray of crap. I'm going to bring it over. We're going to go through it, by the way. It's a mix of cameras and accessories. You know how we all love to go through like eBay or auction finds and stuff. Uh, my, maybe I'll find out whether I've uh, wasted my money or not. I got here. Oh God, the, the big one. Oh. <laughs> this this is what you get for. I don't know. Uh, it's what you get for about fifty quid uh, in the UK, and it's a. <laughs> I 
You know, what? I'm going to just put it on the side because it's it's too much to even uh, <laughs> to even get out to get it to get it all in shot at once. Ah, uh, okay. What's first? What's first? What is this then? It says 117 on it. Hmm, it's a nice camera case. What's that? Ooh. It's definitely pre Super 8. Oh, okay. What this is, is a uh, pretty bog standard Bell and Howell 624 EE Auto Set. It's a uh, standard 8 camera. It's uh, a bit grubby. <laughs> Let's get the door off it. Oh, there we go. That's the standard uh, two reeler. It's got uh, well, you can you can adjust the uh, adjust the uh, the aperture here. And if we wind it up, hey, let's get some extra sound on this. I know you, there are some ASMR people out there, so uh, I'm not going to go to all the bother of hooking up a second microphone. Oops, second microphone, unless we can actually hear what's going on here. Okay, so here we have the sound of a eight millimeter bell how being wound up. Surely this is easy. There we go. If I do it like this, that's better. It wound itself around my finger now. That's what happens when you wear nitrile gloves. Should we see if it works? Okay. There we go. If it works, then this... Uh, of course that goes the other way around. And where's the shutter? Here's the shutter. Here we go. Moment of truth. Oh. Sounds like a fart, but never mind. It's doing it. It's going around. I have every confidence that this is a working standard eight camera. Hooray. It's not, I don't know, it's not particularly amazing. It's, uh, you know, I think I've got a couple of these before. They turn up a lot in auctions. It's probably only worth about five pounds or 10 pounds or so. Who knows, maybe I can con someone into paying more for it. So there we go, That's we're off and running. So that was a Bell and Howell 427, whatever it was called. Next, next, next. Oh, old radio said, I had the Zapruder model 414 spring break on me. Hmm, okay. Uh, what else? What's this? Oh my goodness. Okay, next. Look at this. This is a old, old looking. Uh, I've, I've gone and done the picture upside down, but never mind. So this is a very old looking thing. This looks like it was, I don't know, a good few years old. What the heck? Oh my god. Oh my god. This is heavy as hell. And what on earth? A Siemens, Siemens Kino camera. I've never had a Siemens camera before. Insert smutty joke here. Is it an 8mm or a 16mm or what? I think it's a, it's some kind of 16mm camera. God, this is old. This is some, uh, this is some serious. Let's have a look inside the compartment and see what's going on here. Whoa. Okay. Um. It seems it takes a special kind of proprietary cartridge. I think it's a 16 mil camera. Yeah, it's a 16 mil cartridge camera, I think. And I don't think it takes the 16 mil cartridge that other ones take. I don't know. It's it's a strange looking thing. There's nothing up here. Hmm. Let's uh, let's wind it up. Let's see what happens. And here's the winding key. Look, you just what do you do here? You open this. What is this? Do you pull this out? Oh my goodness, what is what is happening with this thing? It's it's obviously the winding handle, but it's it's strangely uh seems to be stuck inside the body of the camera. I'm thinking that's just that's just a sort of pops out there. Oh, there we go, it's out. Oh I see. And then there's the uh 
there's the, it turns into the winding handle here. Let's wind it up. Nothing. Oops. Did I wind it the wrong way? Okay, nothing is happening that direction. Oh yeah, it is happening this way. Listen to that. I can hear. I can hear it, and I can f I can hear it. I feel a kind of a springy springiness against my hand. So I think it is actually working. So then, the, when you when you finished winding it, you just lay this thing flat like this, I guess. Put it inside this clip. Ah, that's how it works. Look, this is how it works. So you push this this way, and that disengages it from this little clip here. Nice. All right, and then you just when it's done, you just tuck that back in there. What have we got here? It looks like we've got some running speeds. We've got 16 frames a second, 8 frames a second, and 64 frames a second. Um, some settings here which say T, B, and M. I guess that's for normal running, run lock, and shutter stuck open. Oh! It's making a noise. Hooray! So it seems that T means run. Ah, M, I think uh, that's one frame, I think. One frame at a time. Uh, they probably stand for some German uh, terms. Um, what have we got here? Here we have, I guess this is the, yeah, oh, here's, I guess it's the focus between, what does it say there? Meter, 15, three, oh, that's very confusing. I think that's the aperture. Let's see what that looks like inside when I've when I've got the thing running. Okay, here we go. Yeah, so basically, did I? Let's run out of uh, run out of wines now. Ah, uh, you know what? It probably won't won't run while the thing is open, with it? Might it not? Hmm. Okay. It has now decided not to run anymore. I shut it. Still nothing. Did I just break this camera? I don't know. I've got um, there's some uh, there's some. I have questions about this thing. This Siemens old radio says might need a CLA. Yeah. Uh, I'm probably doing. Some ah, there we go. Okay, right. <laughs> okay, so when I when I do the shutter. Yeah, it's, it's not a super consistent uh, running speed, but it does run. But I think my my main my main problem with this really is is finding a cartridge that it'll go that will um, that will go in it. So uh, yeah, well let's uh, let's put a pin in that. The Siemens. What if it isn't even the model? Some very swastika looking uh, logo here. Oh, look at that! You can, uh, you can, uh, you can, you can. The viewfinder's on top there. You can film from above. Isn't that nice? All right, enough of the Siemens. Let's see what else. Oof, <laughs> heavy. Let's see what else we got. Ah, uh, right. Next. Um, not that. Saving that to last. Oh, another relic from the archives. What the hell? Astral reflex zoom. I have never heard of an astral. It looks and it feels a bit like a yashica. It's got a sort of a yashikarish feel to it. In fact, this little tiny handle is a bit pathetic. It just sort of screws onto the bottom there. Uh, <laughs> Old Reader says, probably made when you know who was in tar charge of Deutschland. Yes, yes, yes. In the in the in the words of uh, of Group Captain Lionel Mandrake, trouble is they make such bloody good cameras. Um, there we go. It's your normal um, standard eight business here. Let's see if it works. It's got a uh, a bit of a dirty zoom reflex. I don't know. This looks a bit like a Bell and How. I think. Of, oh, <laughs> I was going to say if I if we peel this this label off, it'll probably say another make underneath. And just as I said that, the bloody label just fell off. Uh, looks like another job for the glue, that stuff. Astral reflex zoom. Well, if it's reflex and it's got a zoom, that's at least something. Um, it's got. It's 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 funny. This kind of design. The uh, the Soviets used this, this kind of design as well. It's um, 
uh, with their uh, quartz zenith quartz zoom. Should we see if it works? Uh, get the uh, get the ASMR camera on. Here we go. Oh, it doesn't it doesn't click when you when you wind it up. It, it makes a sort of a ooh, noise. Listen to this. Okay. Um, on this side, it's got here. It's got an ASA setting because it's got its own its own light meter, and that's uh, oh a running speed, filming speed they call it. Goes 12 FPS, 16, 24, and 32. That's a neat little range. And I assume this thing here is the shutter. Let's see if it works. Oh, healthy sounding. That's a robust motor right there. See what's going on in the compartment when I do that. Ugh. Can't complain. Sounds quite lively. The only thing I'm worried about with this thing is the uh, the lens looks a bit dirty, but maybe it's just on the uh, on the end. Also, I wouldn't trust this light meter further than I can throw it. So uh, yeah, that's the uh, the astral. Well, then it's <laughs> what's the name of this one? It's the uh, one more time, the uh, Astral Reflex Zoom, made, I would say, in the same factory as either Yashica or Bell & Howells, maybe. Yeah, ah, it is what it is. Right, let's put the Astral away. And didn't have a thing, that. Um, oh, let's see what's, what's going on. Must be a rebadged Yashica. Yeah, maybe. It's, it's, got the, it's got that Yashica kind of shape to it. Uh, looks like my Canon, rebadged Canon. I'm not sure if it's a rebadged Canon. I'm not sure if Canon actually did do re rebadged stuff, but um, yeah, I, I wouldn't put it past Yashica. <laughs> Those scoundrels. Right. Now we have a thoroughly disgusting leather pouch, leather camera bag. What's in here? I genuinely don't know what's in here. I'm very excited. I did go through all this stuff once, but it was it was ages ago. Oh, oh, now look at this. It looks older than I thought it would be. Now we're getting somewhere. This is interesting. It is a magazine Cine Kodak. Hmm. Uh, made in the USA by Eastman Kodak Company, Rochester, New York. Oh yes, back in the day when that was uh, that was a uh, look at that's so weird. That is, I, are they kidding? That is bizarre. Okay, I've never seen this before on a camera. Never. The the handle incorporates the bloody viewfinder. Look at this. You can see this, right? So you flip the handle up. So you can, I assume that's a handle. Yeah, it works as a handle like that. But there's also, there's also a viewfinder, like the, the front lens and uh, this little hole that you look through is built into the handle. That's so weird. So you, you look in this end, you look in this end and this is the magnifier there. That's the your sort of viewfinder gate. And you look through the, the, the handle. How bizarre, how strange. How weird. And under the handle, what is this? They've, they've even squeezed a little the footage counter in there. Magazine Cine Kodak. Well, I'm assuming now it's a 16mm uh, magazine camera, but let's, uh, let's open it up and have a look. I assume this is the catch here. Oh, no, no. It says lock and run. Open, lock, and run. Oh, you slide this thing. Okay. So I think, you, yeah, there we go. So you, you slide this. It's got this little handle here. There. So many features are on the top of this thing. How strange. So you move it. Uh, so you move this over to, well, it's open now. So let's open it. Yeah, here it goes. Ooh. Yeah. Old radio says it takes a less proprietary cartridge. Now, yeah, you might have. I think you have a point there. It does take, I've, I've got a magazine camera locking around here. And I think this is the more, this is the more um, you widely used magazine, 16 mil magazines that you get. Um, there's a guy on YouTube who shows you how to open one of these and refill it with your own film. 
And that's definitely going to be the subject of another show. Look, there's someone that's written notes in here. Someone's, what's this, Rotterdam? There's some sort of badge here. I admit that's like, that must be, I don't know, inspected by. And under here it says, uh, light. Oh God, it's written in German, I think. It looks like notes from someone who's who's tried to fix it. I mean, God knows what they said. It could be say, could say Licht meter something. Oh, I'm not even going to hold this up. So, um, yeah. So it's a it's it's a magazine camera basically, which is, means that uh, it could shoot some something like two or three minutes on 16 millimeter. Hey, I wonder if it works. We haven't tried winding it up yet. Um, yes, the the handle works. Hmm. Ah, Vladimir Strozob's in the house. He says, I like these cameras with cassettes. And Old Reyes says, I do too. I wish these carts were more available. Yeah, I mean, I wish they, they I think that someone like the Film Photography Project or someone do them where you, they load them themselves and they, they make you uh, send the cartridge back. But let's have a look if I do the, uh, what might be the the run. Oh, okay. I see. I have to shut this thing first and then move it over to to run. There we go. And now I'm assuming that this is the this thing here is the is the shutter. Let's see what happens. Oh, sounds good. And in fact, look, this little thing up here on the handle that's moving when I turn it. See that? Ah. What else? Can I run it? I can't run it while it's open, but maybe I can fool it into thinking I've closed it. Let's see. Um, push something down. I don't want to break it. No, I'm not going to break it. But um, I'm assuming that this, this little thing here goes around. So, a cartridge camera. I have myself a cartridge camera, a 16 mil cartridge camera. Now all I need is a cartridge. Oof. Pardon me. Oh, this is exciting. What's next? All of these for 50 pounds. Am I am I the lucky one? <laughs> or did I just spend uh, five days of our heating budget? <laughs> on a bunch of on a bunch of cameras. Oh dear, oh dear. Okay, right. Uh, we've got the uh, here's the bell of the ball right here. Uh, the Bell and Howell Auto Load. Um, a truly nasty camera, even when it's not covered in mildew, which this one is. It's uh, when I when people tell me they've got one of these. I've talked about this on the show before. I just basically I pity them. It's um, it's a nasty camera, and um, like I said, even when it's working, I wouldn't trust it further than I can throw it. Uh, should we open it up? Here we go. So you you open it just by pulling this open, and it takes a Super 8 cartridge, auto load. Yeah, I don't believe that. You got to load it yourself. I mean, maybe this is in the early days of Super 8, I reckon. It's got a button here for metering Super 8. It can probably do 40 ASA or 160. That's all. Um, and batteries go in this side. Here we go. They go in a little sleeve. AAA batteries. That's the funny thing about this camera. It takes it takes AAA batteries, uh, and then in a little sleeve as well, which is funny. Probably keeps keeps them all together. Uh, Old Red says, "Yeah." Probably dead as a doornail. Uh, yeah. So uh, I will. Uh, I'll give that a go. I don't know if I if I if I've got any triple A's right here now, but I mean, really, I mean, if if you know what, if I put batteries in this thing and it works, I uh, saw it. I'm, it's going on eBay. Let someone else, uh, <laughs> some other poor person, uh, try and run it. I can't remember if I tried this or not. Interesting thing is, it's got a run button on top. Here, and it's also got uh, a trigger at the front. And when you press the trigger, I don't know if you can see that, that the uh, yeah the run button pushes itself in and out. Probably because um, maybe if you've got this on a tripod, it's easier to uh, to hit the button on top. Yeah, a, a a pretty unremarkable camera. It's got um it's got a power zoom, I think. Yes. Um, and it's got this utterly bullshit focus-matic system, which I've talked about on the show before. It's it's basically it doesn't autofocus for you. It just it just 
estimates your focus based on how far down the camera is tilting. So it's basically just a thing in a counterweight there. And when you point the camera down, it, rec you rec it reckons, oh, you must be filming something close up. And when you point the camera level, the focus matic says to try infinity. Nonsense. Utter nonsense system. I mean, cheap. But, you know, <laughs> are you going to risk a 50-pound roll of film on this piece of nonsense? If so, you're a more desperate person than I am. Right. Let's get on to another one. Now, this... This is interesting. Oh, Neb says that's cruel. Yeah. You know, you've got to be cruel to be kind, don't you? <laughs> Something that sadists like to tell people. Right. Ah. Now, here we go. This is actually the camera that I bought this entire tray of cameras to get because I thought if there's any chance that this was one's working, then it's worth it. What do we have here? Well... This is, should already get you excited. Bolex. Is it Bolex or is it Bolox? The case itself is probably worth the money. Wow. What this is, this is the Bolex uh, version of like the UMIG Mini 5, Mini Systems. Because uh, the Mini is very similar to this. It's a similar size, similar shape. Um, you open the thing similarly. It's just, it's made by Bolex. It's, they call it Compact 8. Compact S, rather. Or is it 8? Yeah, it's S. Bolex 233, this is called. And I have a real soft spot for very, very compact Super 8 cameras because some of these, are, some of them are heavy. And if this thing works, I shall be extremely happy. Uh, it needs a couple of batteries in here. Ah, now is this the one that got mildew in it? I'm not sure. No, no, no. Seems to be working. In fact, if you just uh, hang on a second, I'll get a UMIG Mini 5 out, and I'll show you the show you how it compares. I'm going to be leaving my seat for a second. So don't worry, because I'm only going over here. God, we've got a... Uh, where's my mic now? Where's my, my headphones? I have to plug back into the, into the system. Okay, let's have a look. We're going to do some live comparison now. The Bolex 233 versus the Umig Mini 5. Very similar. Yes. I'm thinking maybe the same factory was involved here. If we turn it around, they're even more similar. See? Yeah, I'm thinking there is a family resemblance here. Um... I love the Mini 5, and it's a better camera than this Bolex because it's got more uh, more features. It was probably made later than this uh, this Bolex. However, if this Bolex works, then uh, hooray, hooray. Should we put some batteries in it? Let's put some, let's, 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 let's wire up the Bolex to the electricity and see what, see what the prisoner will tell us. But it might show us if anything's happening with this thing. I seem to remember this thing's dead, but we'll uh, we'll see. Here we go. So the battery system has got this funny kind of uh, fabric thing here, which uh, was very easy to makes it very easy to pop the batteries out. So this one goes in bottom, and then this one points the other way and top. Okay. Moment of truth. Let's get the. Uh, Get the mic up to it, and oh no, dead man's click. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear, nothing. It might be the batteries, but uh, it's probably the Bolex. Well, we're gonna, I'm gonna put some better batteries in it one of these days, and we'll try it again. Damn, it's a shame if that thing doesn't work because it's a very compact, very sleek kind of. Um, do I say the word, do I use the word nifty? Has anyone said that in the last 30 years? I'm saying it now. All right, well, at least the case will be worth something. Well, be worth putting my other, uh, my other UMIG into. Very nice little compact camera, if it works. I might actually go on and on the eBay and, and look for another one. 
Right. Where does that leave us? Where does that leave us? Ah, okay. Okay, here we go. Oh, okay, I don't know why this was in there. It's a projector lamp, a halogen lamp for a projector. Hey, Will Maloney is there. Ah, oh, man, you probably missed um, missed my, uh, uh, my my screening of your uh, of your film, of the, the Super 8 stock you gave me, but never mind. We will, uh, we will have a, uh, I mean, you can always rewind. These shows are up there forever, going to be haunting me forever. Okay, right. Finally, and actually, this is the other thing that I thought. Okay, if this works, I have I am quids in. Ah. Check this out. Yes, it is. It's a Canon five fourteen XLS Cano sound in its original box. <gasps> ah. So we get to see what a, uh, a, a new purchaser of these magnificent, cam one of these magnificent cameras will, would get if they were opening it up for the first time. Look, there's some, just says accessories there. Oh, this is so exciting. What, what first, there's this, this is an unboxing video. Maybe I'll, you know what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, um, I'm going to zoom out a bit on this, uh, this, this camera. We'll see a bit more than I usually show, but we need the space. There we go, that's better. So yes, ah, uh, God, what, 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 this is in so many parts. So, so it comes, so this thing comes out. <laughs> Manny says, now that's something. You're damn right, Manny, this certainly is something. This is, this is why I got the camera. I'm why it's this and the Bolex uh, are really why I got the short auction. So what's this? This is the just a white box that comes with it. And what's inside this white box? Oh, ho, 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 ho. it's an original Canon 514 XLS carrying carrying case. And sometimes there's treasure inside these pockets. <gasps> no exception here. Yay! Look, it's the original instruction guide. And an original nasty little earpiece before the advent of the Walkman, when they had these little kind of hard earpieces with uh, mono mini jacks. It's a miracle that we even still use mini jacks. What else is in there? Some plastic bag. And oh, there is stuff in here. What's this? Oh, there's a whole bunch of stuff. What is this? <gasps> wow, look. It's okay. This is the thing that holds up the microphone if you want to put it on a table. Um, here is oh these are these are these are like hen's teeth very useful. It's um, a um, it's a mini jack um, start and stop button that you can use for any other uh, micro jack. You can use for this for any camera that's got an electronic um, auto iris, not auto iris, auto uh, uh, well what is it? A remote cable, an electrical remote cable. These are great. They're really useful. Also look at this. Three Canon branded cleaning sticks, little Q-tip things made by Canon. Not even opened that thing. Um, and then, what's this? Ah, it's like a, it's a Japanese. Oh, it's instructions on how to use the boom microphone. Because this thing comes with an original Canon microphone inside. I hope it's a microphone, it's not some sort of dildo, but here we go, inside a, a leather case. Let's open it up. Oh, ho, ho. let's see if you can get it out. Look at that, so it's the, it's the case that these things came in, and this would clip to the top of the camera and extend all the way. <laughs> Show you on this one. There, look at that. Whoa, hey! Shame we're not in 3D. Whoa, hey! <laughs> yeah. Sick. <laughs> um, well, well, that's the accessories. But what about the camera itself? Oh, there's a mess now. Oh, this will be lots of clearing up afterwards. Okay, so the camera itself. Let's get the uh, let's get the the meat of the. And here, of course, is the Canon five one four XLS. Beautiful condition. It's barely scratched. It's clean, 
whoever had this camera put a lot of um, well they didn't they didn't uh, they didn't take it out much or if they did they cleaned it up afterwards now of course these cameras are known by um, uh, the police in some countries to uh, they've been mistaken for machine pistols something to do with the long handle and the general shape of it I heard about a guy in Brazil who got who got into some a spot of bother um, so anyway does this camera work well therein lies a tale I got this out and my um, my uh, uh, my friend mr. X who has is one of the only two people in the world that I know who can make a broken camera work just by holding it I swear to God there, there's some people there's him and a guy who works at uh, Nicholas camera company in Mornington Crescent in London they're able to hold a camera that no one else could get working and like bloody magic the thing just starts working in their hands I can't explain it but I do know that there are some people who have the opposite skill if you like to call it a skill where they will hold a working camera in their hands and magically that camera will break and uh, I don't know how that works how that works either because they, they don't some of them don't seem to do anything that I wouldn't do with the camera and the camera just dies in their hands I can't explain it anyway um, my friend Mr X Held, I, I couldn't get this camera to work, unfortunately. That's the real shame of it, is that it's in such good condition and um, it, it was completely dead. However, my friend Mr. X held it in his hands and got it to work for about sort of 20, 30 seconds. Just long enough, just long enough to get some footage out of it, which I've got here. It, I put the very end of um, Will Maloney's Plus X in there and i did a uh, i i put it into this camera and what did we get well not this this was on the uh, on the mini 5 i'm just it was this was the uh, the very end of that bit so uh where is it let's get to the end so it's kind of a blink and you'll miss it here we go just after this train footage so this was the last ca shot that i took of that using that canon 514 uh, it's all a bit grungy there because I used the end of the film as a uh, as as a test strip for that um, development of the Plus X. But here we go. The last thing, the last thing that this camera ever supposedly saw was uh, a couple of vans in a car park. But look at that quality of that picture. That's a lovely picture. That that these these cannons have got some excellent lenses in them. I just wish I knew how to open it up and and fix it because this would be a absolute prime camera if I uh, if uh, if I manage to get it fixed or you know it's possible that just for, for for no particular reason it just starts to work again you know maybe it's um, it's um, I don't know maybe it's just a loose connection sometimes these things have got a loose connection between the handle and the body if I'm really lucky and I think I don't know if I tried this or not but it has um, external power this thing and I might be able to, uh, where is the external power? I'm sure it did. Uh, huh. Somewhere here, I seem to remember, this thing has a, an external 9 volt uh, power. Which I can't see on this one. Am I going mad? Uh, those of you in the chat, do you know if these things have got an external power? I thought this had an external, maybe only some of them did. Maybe only the autofocus 5 one four XLS has one. Oh, I might be, uh, you know, what they say, shit out of luck here. Yeah. Huh? Huh? I don't know. I'm gonna keep working on it. It's 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 worth a try just to see if it if it works. Neb says I have that reverse Midas touch. Oh well, man, I feel I feel for you, really. I mean, I, I, I seem to be kind of neutral in this regard. It, it, cameras will, will start working and stop working without any particular uh, um, effort on my part. So I don't know. But, ah, and finally, uh, an original camera, uh, Canon microphone. I mean, this, this whole set, if this camera was working reliable, reliably, let's see how much that costs. I'm sure there's guys in Japan selling these things for insane amounts of money. Let's have a look. Let's go on. Let's go on eBay. Come with me now. We're going to see how much this, how much I would have been able to get for this thing if I can get it to work properly. Okay, so Canon five one four XLS. 
Uh, two results. Well, one in Australia, parts only, parts only, for goodness sake. As is, okay, let's, let's find some that aren't um, toast. Hmm, sold as is, read as is. Oh dear, they see, there seems to be a lot more broken ones than there are working ones. Look at this, uh, $250 X, EX plus four, four stars. Does that mean it's working? 250, hmm, hmm, excellent. Uh, what do they say? Like new, a few scratches. Uh, there is fungus on the lens, functional, it works properly, yeah. Let's include there's a set, okay. So you can get one that, where the, the owner says it's working properly for $250, uh, which, pff, I don't know, for a decent Super 8 camera. The problem is these things, they're like, they're like, a, a ticking time bomb. Look, even the remote switch. The remote switch is. Let me get. I'm going to get my uh, hands in front. No, I can't. The remote switch is uh, 39.99. That's what someone's asking. So I could I could make my money back just on that little remote switch. Excellent. Old radio says. Uh, yeah, put it on as not tested. Yeah, yeah. But then I've I've gone and um I've I've tipped my hands now by doing an actual show about this about this particular camera not working particularly well. Uh, I could say, as seen on YouTube, $269, yeah. Let's see, what, what's the, let's see if we search it from, um, from uh, price highest first. Let's see what the really high-end ones are. Yeah, 250 ah, well. Ah. I don't know. I guess I could. Let's see. Oh, let's see how much they actually got sold for. Now we're in. Now we're into 107. That's not bad. Uh, oh, that's not the same one. Yeah, working Canon 514 XL. Ah, but not XLS. Eh, mind you. An XL. You might as well get an XL. Might, uh, seeing as that you don't get a lot of sound film these days. Huh. Oh, here's one. Uh, fully working. This got sold for 100. Fifty-five pounds, hundred ninety-two dollars. Huh. Okay. I'm not really in the market for another of these. I mean, you know, if it worked, it would be nice. But anyway. Okay. Let's get on to the final thing. The final thing. The final item in this box of delights. I still don't know if I really got my money's worth, but well, who knows? It's the it's the familiar red box of Umig, one of my favourite brands, made in Austria. High quality equipment projectors and cameras and uh, what on earth is this okay what this is is a daylight viewer for a projector so instead of having to black out the room and put it on um, you know put your put your film up on the wall you just fit this doohickey to the end of your projector and you watch it on this screen here see now this is set up for a UMIG projector with these fittings here, but I'm going to balance this in front of a projector, and we're going to watch tonight's uh, tonight's movie treat on um, on uh, on on this thing for once. Why not? In fact, if I move the camera around, uh, we might be able to see how this thing works. So, uh, oops, I'm just going to take this thing off. So, yeah, forgive the uh, all the mess here. Okay, well, that's no good. Well, it's good. It'll have to do. So I've got my DSLR camera here. I've got my. Um, this is a standard eight projector, and basically you just put this over the lens, like so, and then uh, the picture comes through on this little screen here. So we're going to have our end of the show, end of the year, end of the uh, show. Oh, not that. Uh, we're going to have our little film show now, and we're going to be able to. I'm going to be able to watch it on that daylight viewer. Yay! Ah. And we've got some very old stuff today. We've got some uh, some standard eight on, um, and it's called. Oh, it's, I forgot what the film's called. Ah. It's called Hotel Hysteria. 
I'm going to take make it a little bit darker, just so uh, we can see what we're up to. Right. Ah, look. What are they saying on the on the chat? Um, Sankyo made one as well. Dig it. Awesome idea. Who's? Looks like the head of an OHP. Yeah, it does. It does kind of. Where have, where have I? Hello. Yeah. Can you all hear me? It's all. I'm only getting it on one on one ear now. So uh, never mind. Right. Let's have a look. We um. Just going to switch on the DSLR. God knows if this will work. It worked in in practice. <laughs> It's the famous last words. And I'll switch the DSLR on. There we go. Now, it doesn't look like it's on, but I think it is. Let's just put a light because it's... Yeah, yeah, it's working. I just got the uh, the brightness turned down quite low, so that's my phone battery there. All right. Fingers crossed. <laughs> Hotel Hysteria. If it doesn't work, you have, you have bet your camera show hysteria. And here we go. Yay! Oh dear, it's very uh, dodgy looking. Why does it look so bad? Wait a minute. I know why it looks bad because I've got this DSLR. I've got some effects on it from the last show, so let's take those off. Yeah, some color correction. Uh, let's get that away. Yes, get rid of color correction. Right, that should be better. Let's try that now. Okay, yay! Here we go. So we've got this. This is a great scene. We've got this horse that's uh, bucking the uh, the ceiling. Oh, some music. Get some music on here. Yay, some proper. So this guy, he has this great idea. He gets, puts the, he sticks the horseshoes with the nails on to the ceiling. <laughs> I think they did that by reversing it. It's awful quality, but and he kicks the horse's hearts. The horse kicks and, oh, <laughs> genius, genius idea. Can I get any better um, focus here? That's not Laurel and Hardy, it's, it's an ersatz Laurel and Hardy. I'm trying to get a better, uh, better focus, but I'm really onto a loser here because this thing isn't properly attached to the projector anyway. Ah, oh, this is actually Ben's home video on Kodachrome. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. <laughs> it doesn't look. I don't have a, a Model T Ford, unfortunately. Well, is that? Oh, I don't know who that is. Worst picture quality I've ever I've ever come up with. But anyway, well, this goes on for a while. So I don't know if the music's too big. Old radio says I've got a few of these. I've got Chaplin City Lights. Yeah, that's quality. This is something I don't know what this is. Could this be Ben Turpin? You know, that cross-eyed guy? I don't know. Oh, a lady's corset! Oh my god, that's the Hayes Code is going to have something to say about that. <laughs> I don't think you're allowed to show women's underwear back in the day. And again! Anyway, what a nice way to end up the show. Oh, the horse. Oh, yes. Oh, my God. Wow. No CGI then. Uh, oh, 
Oh, he says, I was wrong. It's Chaplin's Easy Street. Well, that's, that's, I'm glad you clarified that because I was, you know, wondering. William Maloney says, pretty cool to think this is a scan on a projector running live. Yes, indeed. Look, look, here's my hand. See, just to show you. We're about to reach the height of our career. This is like some, I don't know. So if I move this thing around, I'd like to show this. If I zoom out a bit, maybe we can see it. Yeah, not really. Here's something uh, interesting. If I slow it down, you'll get it. All, it'll go all flickery. But I'm not, actually, I actually don't want to do that. Let's see, I, I, yeah, I think we walked into this uh, into this film halfway through because I spent half of it using to set the thing up. Oh dear, hotel's blown up. Manny says, "Great show, Ben. You have a great set of holidays. You too, Manny." I guess it's time to uh, to say goodbye for the for 2022. I hope you've all had a great year. I'm going to ruin this uh, this picture here by uh, putting the end credits up. But that was Ben's Camera Show 38. A bit of a grab bag, a bit of a mixture of stuff there. And uh, thank you all for tuning in. It's always nice to show my show my stuff to people. And um, thanks everyone for uh, for watching throughout the year. It's been great fun. I do not do this for a living. I do not accept advertising. I do not accept um, any uh, any any uh, funding for this. I do it purely off my own bat and as cheap as humanly possible. And I will be back in 2023. And uh, in keeping with the uh, with the highly unprofessional way that I run this show, I don't know when I'll be back. I'll be back when I damn well feel like it. But if you uh, if you subscribe to my uh, if you have a look at Zero Budget Film School on YouTube, you know all the like and subscribe bollocks. Um, then, um, then yeah, you'll you'll get to you'll get to hear when my uh, when my next one is on. No policy, I'm ruined. Are we going to let this play out? Why not? Why not? Let's uh, let's all chat. Well done, Ben says William Maloney. Thanks, thanks, Bill, and thank you for all that foot, all that uh, those cartridges you sent me. Not just the Plus X, but you sent me a whole a whole buttload of old Kodachrome, which I'm still using to this day. So uh, yeah, thanks for that. And uh, if you've got any more Plus X, you know, that's sort of burning a hole in your in your freezer, I'd be happy to take it off your hands. <laughs> um, what else? Oh, it's, yeah, might as well run it out. It's only got a minute or two left to go. A train! Oh my goodness. Oh, and now things are happening. Uh, sports truly see you in, I can get stuff sent out in January. Well, if you, you know, the whole point of this show old radios is uh, if you don't you can't send stuff off to a lab then um, you know have a go at doing it yourself uh oh train's gone over the uh, uh oh then again if all, if you just want to do it by the lab who am I to stand in your way oh no they're not yes obviously the, the, the thing's burning down because the train has run over the uh, un <laughs> over the uh, over the hose and uh, Vlad throws up says see you next time Ben See you next time, Vlad. We're gonna we're gonna finish up this. Might as well. What else do I have to say? Not a lot, um, other than um, uh, come to Exploding Cinema next year. Go to explodingcinema.org. I'm involved with those guys. We show movies and we do projections and crazy stuff. A good fire is better than a poor one. Hmm. <laughs> on the right looks like my mate Morgan anyway was that it yeah here we go and, uh, and a funny walk off into the distance there we go and the end hooray all right that's it from me everyone thanks for tuning in again I say that oh crap the thing's going around again we're all gonna go now I'm gonna, or I'm gonna, I'm gonna head off into the sunset now. I'm gonna uh, take a swim in my post-show cocktail. So uh, see you all on the other side. Have a great Christmas. Have a great New Year, and have a great um, 2023. And I hope it's better than 2022. I would say 2022's already been. It was already better than 2021. So uh, other than the fact that I've got to choose between heating and eating, um, <laughs> things are looking up for the New Year. Old Rio says, I'll try to develop myself in 2023. Let's all do some 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 developing in 2023 of all kind. 
Anyway, I'll see you all on the other side. Good night. Doodle 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 doodle.